Hey everybody, my name is Ronnie Sanders. I am the CEO and Managing Director of Power Music Radio. And a little bit about Power Music Radio, we're a 24 hour internet uh, broadcasting station. We play R&B, Southern Soul, Gospel, Real Soul, Jazz, a little bit of everything. But other passions that we have is about independent artists. And we love being a platform, another platform for independent artists to showcase their music. But our other passions is about the community. And it's about businesses and organizations who are doing fantastic things in the community. So you know that whenever you see my interviews, I say one thing consistently, and that is I am always, always excited when I get to meet people who are doing some awesome things in the community. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to meet three gentlemen who are absolutely passionate about what they do in their community. So I'm going to start with Mr. Anthony. First of all, guys, I want to say thank you for joining me this afternoon in this conversation. It's a pleasure to be able to meet all of you. And so I'm going to get you each to uh, introduce yourself. So Anthony, we'll start with you, everybody. With pleasure, I want to introduce Anthony Pope. Hi, Anthony. Hey, Ronnie. How are you doing? Thank you so much for having us on. My name is Anthony Pope, and I'm one of the original organizers of the Men of Southeast Raleigh. And your organization is called the Men of Southeast Raleigh. The Men of Southeast Raleigh. And we'll, we'll clarify that a little later on so people will understand why we came up with that name. You saw it in my eyes. I was getting ready to say, how did you come by that name? Right? So, Anthony, who are the gentlemen that's sitting with you? To my right, I have my right hand man, Samuel, or oh, Alex Sam Craven. We call him Sam. That's, that was the name he went by growing up. And so uh, Sam is one of the original organizers of the, the group as well. And to my left, I have my, my left hand man, Ben Briggs. Ben is actually a, a transplant to Raleigh. He's been here for a long time, but uh, he is also an integral part of our organization as well. <laughs> so uh, Ben, you're like that small town. Like no matter how many years you've been there, you're still the new person. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And as you learn more about this organization, you'll understand the history and why. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we'll go back to the teaser that Anthony started out with, with the men of Southeast Riley. So uh, Anthony, tell us, uh, you know, how how did the name come about? Well, let me, let me tell you how we got organized. Sam's sister, Joni Craven, actually approached me uh, a couple of months after I had retired after 42 years of being in the workforce. And Joni was like, hey, we need to get a, a brother organization because they had a women's organization called 50 Plus Women of Color, Class, Confidence, and Style. So she said, we want to get a brother organization started to help out in you know, rebuilding our community. And so I said, Joni, look, sister, I just retired. I ain't really thinking about that. I just need to enjoy life. <laughs> But you got to know Joni. Joni is persistent. She does a lot of community work, and she has been doing it for years. So she kept on and on. And finally, she got her brother, Sam, to join in. Now, Sam had been retired for a while. I'll let him tell your story as well, tell him his story. But uh, Sam and I joined forces, and we decided, okay, let's go ahead and try this. And from that is how we got started. Uh, Sam can give you the dates. We got started on June 25th, and he's going to tell you where we had our first meeting at. And it was hot. <laughs> yeah, I know we had it. Yes, June twenty fifth. Yeah, we had our first meeting June twenty fifth, two years ago. Uh huh. And one thing led to another. Everybody was excited about getting started, and as the organization began to blossom, guys just started coming in, and we started making preparations to go big with this. And successfully, it has off the charts. Yes. Yeah, we, we started on, on our first meeting. We just kind of threw it out there and called some guys up and we had 20 guys at our first meeting. Okay. So, uh, from that, you know, every time we had a meeting, guys were saying, hey, I, I want to be a part of what you guys are doing. And that's how we continue to grow. So we're up to about 65 men right now. Wow. And so here's a unique thing about our group, our organization, Ronnie. We are all grew up, most of us grew up together, were born and raised and lived in Southeast Raleigh all our life, which was the Black community in Raleigh. Mm -hmm. And so we all were just 
went to junior high, high school, elementary, and even some of us went to college together. And we maintain our friendship because that bond was uh, built during the time we were growing up in our community. Okay. So then how did you um, end up joining the organization? Who pulled you to the side? And uh, did Joni uh -huh. talk to you too? <laughs> because uh, folk and I have been friends for a while and I've known Sam. So when they were telling me about the organization, I, it was kind of like, well, it was the men of Southeast Raleigh and they, they said it was a nucleus and all these guys knew each other and I'm new <laughs> to the group, right? So first of all, when they told me what they intended to do, what the plans were given back to the community, I thought, okay, that sounds great. Anytime I can help grow the community, and you know, especially people look like myself. Mm -hmm. uh, in my case, it was kind of really hilarious because everybody, with the exception of no, myself, knew everybody by their nicknames. Oh. Nobody was using government names, right? <laughs> when I looked at the roster, everybody and I knew by government names. Needless to say, some people we might have five or six Tonys, you know, and it, it went on. So when they're saying Tony. I got to say, hey, hold it, you know, who is Tony? And as soon as I find out who Tony is, then they'll use a nickname and say, well, no, that was not that Tony. That's this Tony. <laughs> so anyway, it kind of evolved through that. And uh, it's amazing that when you find a group of guys that came together, such as this group has, started out. And when he says we have a roster, we have an active roster. A lot of cases you'll find rosters where everybody just signs on and you don't see them. But as you hear more about the community involvement, things that we've done, uh, we're looking anytime 40 plus at a, a meeting. Wow. But yeah, mine was a real introduction. <laughs> <laughs> so now you know everybody by their nicknames? Um, no, <laughs> I have a roster. <laughs> Every time somebody knew George Ronnie, it throws another monkey wrench in it for him because we use the nickname, yeah. and he knows about the government name. <laughs> so, so you know, you're mentioning all the, you're talking 65 men yes. who are doing fantastic things in the community, right? So yes. now, how, what was like your, first, what is your mission? And then okay. talk about the very first project that you did um, with men of Southeast uh, Riley. Okay. Sam's going to share our mission with you. Okay. okay. Um, the men of Southeast Raleigh is a group well-minded and brothers with, were born in the community. Mm -hmm. And our mission is to, to uh, sow back in the community. Um, through partnership with other organizations and to fulfill that. Um, and as we go on, we will speak on the things that we have done in the community. So to add on to what Sam was saying, our, our model had how it kind of became to connect, collaborate, and partner with churches, schools, individuals, agencies, anyone in our Southeast Raleigh community. And we are exclusively committed to our Southeast Raleigh community. And the reason I tell you why is because we all lived in that community growing up. This was the, the black part of town. Mm -hmm. And so we had our own little community where our doctors, our lawyers, our teachers, all of our parents knew each other. And so we were family. And we were told as kids, don't you cross over such and such a street because now you're in the wrong section of town. Oh, wow. <laughs> so that's how that's how we got connected. And so we're like-minded men who really just want to sow back into our community because as you know, in most metropolitan areas, the geographics of our community has changed. Yes. And so you have a diverse group of people living in our community who don't look like us. And sometimes it's easy for our history and our legacy to get lost. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we came together so that we could rebuild our village so that we could preserve our history and our legacy exclusively in our Southeast Raleigh community. And that's mainly where we partner with different agencies in that part of the community. And just to add on to that, mm -hmm. it's started out really as men over 50. Yes. 50 and plus. then we have men 50 plus, so men over 50, 50 plus. And then yeah. we decided that, uh, well, if you know the history, you need to share the history because of the village effect. And mm -hmm. you can't share the history unless you go reach out to the younger generation as well. Mm -hmm. So we have identified younger members as well. 
And again, just trying to reserve and preserve the history of Southeast Raleigh and let the legacy live, live on. And so you're doing something that I'm always saying is that um, we don't live in the past. I think our younger people think that when we talk about the past, then we expect them to live in the past. And that's not true. What we want them to do is understand the past. And if you understand the past, then you can move forward in the future. Um, because I see a lot of our young people making some mistakes that don't have to be made because they're not really looking and seeing what has happened. You know, they, a, a lot of them say, I don't wanna know y'all stay in the past. You know, that stuff was back then. But to understand what went on back then and how we got to where we are now is important. And it seems like that's something that you, your organization is working hard at doing, correct? That's correct. Mm -hmm. They help maintain where we are now. Because if you lose your history, you lose appreciation. And you're doing all that through working in the community and working with different projects and stuff. So I saw that you have a lot of partners. So you have a lot of uh, companies that is backing what you do. Well, talk about some of the projects that you do um, in the community. So one thing that we did when we came together, Ronnie, we, there was, in, in North Carolina, there was probably a, a handful of segregated parks, and John Chavis Memorial Park, who was a Black educator in the Raleigh, Way County area, they had a recreation center. And so this was the hub of everything in the black community dating back from 1938. All of the wow. politicians, all of the sports uh, events, all of the concerts, entertainers, this is where they came. And it's John Memorial Chambers uh, Park. So we mm -hmm. decided, hey, let's adopt this as our adopted park. And so we did that and were able through the city of Raleigh to get that as our adopted park. And so we, uh, adopted that and we do community service projects exclusively at that community center. And so, and back right beside the community center was Chavis Height Projects. Mm -hmm. And that's where a lot of us lived or our families lived during that time. So we decided, hey, this is a great way. And one of our guys, Louis Archibald, we call him Money Boy. He suggested, hey, let's, let's adopt Chavis Park. And so that's what we did. And so that is our hub. That is one of our main partners that we have, the first partner actually that we um, join forces with. Okay. And so now what kind of projects do you do there? Okay. Whatever is needed, really. And um, it kind of varies. Now, recently, we participated in the East Egg Hunt, and it was an East Egg Hunt for adults. What? Yeah. <laughs> that must have been fun. <laughs> We put out 800 eggs, 800 what? eggs. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, East Egg Hunt adults, who's gonna pick up all these eggs? <laughs> <laughs> I put them out, but bending over the foot and pick them back up. To our surprise, once they opened the gate, so to speak, the eggs were gone in three to five minutes. No way, 800 eggs? 800 <laughs> eggs. And you should have called these adults, they were like big kids. <laughs> So they, you guys hid, you actually hid the eggs or were they sitting out visible? They, they were sitting out visible. <laughs> it was spread over a baseball field. Oh, wow. <laughs> and within five minutes? Five so how, minutes. Many, how many people came to the event? I, I imagine it was probably about 50 people, 50 okay. adults at that particular event. <laughs> and so we, we've also done some other events. We've done a, um, we help with mulching and planting flowers around the, the community center. We help out um, with the Black History events that they have going on during Black History Month. We take a major part in that because there's a, a component of that called Share Your Story. So we get to share our story about that community and also the projects in the school that was actually close to that community, which is John Ligon High School, which was the only Black high school in that area at that time. And so Sam will tell you a little bit a bit how we came up with our colors for our logo based on that. Now, what are the colors for your logo? The logo, our colors are blue, blue and gold. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, that was uh, Ligon High School colors. And we said that we needed to stick with those colors because we were not able to go to that because they integrated schools at that time. And so that left us out. So we said, we need to do something. 
And so that's what we did. We selected the blue and the gold to represent John W. Ligon High School. Yes. Wow. I, I, I know that you guys know that this is very powerful, what you're doing and the, the connections and everything. You know, I feel it and I'm here all the way on the other side of, of the East Coast because <laughs> I'm in Connecticut. Wow. And, but I, I can feel, you know, when you're talking, the passion you have about, you know, preserving history, but also, you know, working in the community to make sure that things run smoothly. So now mm -hmm. is the high school still there or is it, is it still, you know, operating? The high school is now a middle school, an uh, integrated middle school. Okay. It's still standing, but it still has the name. Did the name change any? No, it's, it just changed to John W. Ligon Middle School. Right. As opposed to John W. Ligon High School. High school, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so and we, they, they've actually integrated that school. So it is now a uh, gifted and talented magnet school. And so we, we still have a little piece of history because the original building is still there. And the projects that we grew up in, some of us, John Chavis um, uh, projects, they have torn that down and totally refurbished that community. So mm -hmm. now you have uh, a mixture of families and houses in their single living homes. You have an adult senior center, citizen center. And all of this is still right beside John W. Ligon Recreation Center which they have done a multi-million dollar renovation. So wow. which we have done when we were there, but now we have this amazing facility that is kind of the, the, um, the, the, the highlight of all the parks and recreation centers in Raleigh. Now, what is it, uh, um, Ben had mentioned some of the age levels of the, the men that is in your group. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what is the range? Is it a lot of, do you have a lot of young men? in your group and is all is everybody male in your group it's a male group it is a male organization okay okay well the age has changed and originally we were looking at 50 plus but then again so we could save the history and share the history it's kind of expanded and probably uh as of this week i would think we may have members as early as uh mid-20s yeah mm -hmm. yeah mid-20s growing up I'm going to step back for a second. You mentioned our community partners. I'll give you an idea quickly of some of our partners. Mm -hmm. As we were talking, it uh, was John Davis Memorial Park and Community Center. The city has a program, and so we did adopt the park. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to kind of highlight as the appreciation for the city, we are going to, the organization is going to be uh, uh, presenting an award this coming Tuesday evening at the um, auditorium here in uh, Raleigh to kind of recognize some of the efforts that the organization being less than two, year, two years old has contributed back to the city on a volunteer basis. So we also have the uh, city of Raleigh Parks, Recreation and Cultural Resources Department, uh, North Carolina Black Women Empowered 50 Plus, Oak City Cares, which is a homeless shelter here in uh, Southeast Raleigh again. <laughs> started in uh, right here in the nucleus of Southeast Rock. There's an area known as Boy Square. And Sundays, they would come out of churches, various organizations distribute food in the park. The city decided that it uh, blemished the image that they were looking for. So oh. it was banned, right? And um, so then from that has grown now, a uh, actually a um, center, which is uh, <clears throat> through the week, it offers all kinds of opportunities to help individuals in need. And on weekends, we go out and provide the human humanitarian aspect of it. So instead of just giving people food in a uh, plastic foam container and to go and find a place, we stand and uh, act as hosts and making them feel appreciated and saying you are a lot of them for whatever reasons have not been as successful as others but say so you're still a part of this community, feel a part that uh, we are here for you. We, we reach out in any capacity we can. So you see us here, you'll see us in the community because we have our logos on our t-shirts, on our hoodies, on our hats, and it's still growing in development. <laughs> uh, in addition, there's an organization known as Fathers Forever, 
-hmm. Now, what we do, because that is an organization that helps uh, uh, male men, fathers, I guess I'd say, to uh, go and look for jobs, and we provide uh, business attire. And that's something that uh, I'm sure you cannot identify in most cities. We looked for this program for actually a couple of years. Mm -hmm. The uh, first one we heard about was that uh, I think was uh, Mathis, uh, Judge Mathis came up with the program. We thought, well, you know, how can we find something of that nature in this area without having to invent the wheel? Mm -hmm. And we found Fall of Forever. So we are uh, again fitness attire and uh, <clears throat> we casual businesses. We provide clothes for that. And that's awesome. Okay. So and in addition, it's uh, healing transitions, Habitat for Humanities, Southeast Raleigh Elementary School, Southeast Raleigh High School Athletic Department, Kabbalah Temple, St. Augustine University Chapel, uh, Wendell First Baptist Church, First Congregation Church, Davis Street uh, Presbyterian Church, mm -hmm. Old Raleigh Safety Club, which is a passionist house, uh, Fidelity Else Lodge, MLK Youth Choir, and the list grows from there. <laughs> so now, when when um, I think about you know having the conversations with Anthony, and I think about all the you know all the things that your organization does, how do you keep it together? You're involved in so many different things, and it seems like the organization is growing. Only two years. That's mm -hmm. amazing growth. So how do you keep it together? Who, you know, keep it organized? We, as men of Southeast Raleigh, mm -hmm. we keep it together. Because if we keep it together, we can go out and feed the people that need to be fed. Not mm -hmm. only physical food, but spiritual food as well. So we as men, when we have our monthly meetings, mm -hmm. we have business meetings. No plan. We serious about what we do. Okay. And like today, we have a meeting at five o'clock. We know there's business got to be done, so we go do it because we mm -hmm. know it's out here that needs help. And we're we're focused on what we're going to do. These guys, when they come in, we tell them we understand. You know, this is a volunteer organization. Mm -hmm. That's the about us, Ronnie. We chose not to be a nonprofit. We chose not to be a for profit. We're not a religious organization. We're not a fraternal organization, even though we have members that are fraternity members and lodge members. But we are a like-minded group of men who wanted to give back to our community. So we did not want a board of directors telling us who we can partner with and who we couldn't. So we are self-sufficient. We provide our own resources in terms of finances. We pay mm -hmm. monthly dues, and we use our resources, our time, and our talent to sow back into our community in any way that we can. So we we, we decide who we want to partner with. And more, more than likely, uh, we're going to uh, partner with your organization because we want to help you. And I, that's a, I guess also that's a unique thing about our organization. We, um, we just create things that we want to do. And actually, um, Anthony and Sam are being very humble about how this organization is held to say that. <laughs> they, they'll be very humble, to put it very mildly, because uh, they spearhead. And so they're kind of recognized as the contact people uh, for the organization. They mm -hmm. never shy away from phone calls. They never shy away from meetings. Anything that uh, is heard about, again, because the organization is being more and more recognized, we do have a contact person, and we always refer, even though they don't want to accept it, we always can say, well, you know, you can always go to either Pope or to Sam, <laughs> and then it kind of spreads from there. So we don't turn anybody down, but we kind of know the body of the group, you know, who keeps us. One thing I also want to point out is that when they say we have meetings, I think it's exceptional when you have a group of men such as uh, ours is that we pinpoint the time frame. Our meetings start promptly at uh, five o'clock. By six o'clock, you're out of there. <laughs> I mean, it's all business. And then social media. Not only that, Sam also has a really nice home and he offers up the home for uh, the meetings. And so we enjoy going over to Sam's for barbecues, just kicking back. And he also uh, is a vintage car collector. 
So, oh, wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so you got, with Sam and I, we get beaten $5 each. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. We'll, we'll give you money later on. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, with all the things that you have already done, is there something on your list that you have not done that you would love to include in what you're doing with your organization? Is there something mm -hmm. on your horizon that you're looking at and saying, you know, we need to get involved in this as well? Yeah. You know, one thing that we found, which is similar in most metropolitan areas, that the relationship between law enforcement and our community is different from the other parts of town. So they come in our community. When I say they, I'm talking about law enforcement. They're not all law enforcement. But when they're in our side of town, they're police. When they're in another side of town, they're there to serve and protect. So right now, I've been meeting with uh, the director of our local YMCA, which is uh, the newest YMCA here in Southeast Raleigh. And they also are uh, in the same facility with the Southeast Raleigh Elementary School, where we do the partner read program. But the director of that facility at the Y and myself are working together to come up with this forum of how we can address policing uh, in our community. And so we're really trying to put together lawyers, uh, court systems, social workers, mental health specialists, people in the community, uh, everybody just come to the table and see how we can come up with an agenda to address policing our communities. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when I was younger, I grew up in, a, in the projects in my community. Yeah. And when I was younger, the police used to walk around and they would stop at your house. You know, my oh, parents would see oh. them, you know, and um, they would talk to us. They knew our names and we weren't fearful of police. We respected police because exactly. we they were there to do a job, but we were not afraid of the police. Oh. And so that was when I was younger. When my youngest daughter graduated from high school, mm -hmm. I went to her graduation and the security officer there came and said, you're a Sanders. Now, can you imagine how many years that was? Because I have six children and she's the youngest of six. Oh, wow. So that's a lot of years between growing up in the projects and, you know, being a mother and having children that, you know, all went through high you know, school and everything. For somebody to come up and mention your name, he was one of the policemen who used to patrol the projects when I grew up. That's now amazing. that to me has always stuck with me. And I've even, you know, when they say, what can we do? And I'm saying, you know, something as small as that, and it's not small, but something as simple as that can make a, a huge difference in the community. So, um, you know, I commend you because I know that that's one of the biggest things that needs to be done in our communities. And for you guys to be approaching that and, and working on that, you definitely deserve your award. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. One of the other things, Rhonda, I'd just like to interject um, with this um, organization, I think the thing that really makes us unique is that we don't try to create things to do. We have some annual projects that we do. We do the Kwanzaa celebration and, you know, we have the annual Easter egg hunts that we participate in. But what we do is we try to really exclusively reach out to organizations that have projects going on. We've had two events this weekend. We uh -huh. partnered with our Southeast Raleigh Community Learning Center, which is an after school program for kids in Southeast Raleigh. They had a fish fry fundraiser on Friday. So we uh, donated water cases of water. We bought plates. Uh, we promoted it in the community. On Saturday at Oak City Cares, we do an annual clothing drive, the summer and fall. So we distributed clothes yesterday at um, the Oak City Cares facility. And lots of people benefited from that because we tell the guys, clean your closets out. Just, just bless somebody else with shoes and clothes or whatever. And so that's what they did. And today we're going to meet, and uh, as Ben had stated earlier, this celebration award ceremony uh, that we're going to be involved in on Tuesday, it's not a little thing. It's a major uh, award. It's called the Fred Fletcher Outstanding Community Volunteer Award for the entire city of Raleigh Parks and Recreation Park for the adopt -a park program. So we're one of uh, a number of recipients on that program to receive our award, and we're honored. You know, we, we didn't set out looking for credit. We were just committed to the cause, which was serving our community. 
And so now people know us. They see us and they know who we are and they inquire about, well, well can I join you? It's like, yeah, sure. So we probably have about three new guys joined today. That's awesome. So now you mentioned that you um, fund the things that you're doing yourselves. Yes. Through, you know, meeting dues and things like that. Is there other ways that the community can support you guys in, in your efforts? That's a good question. Yeah, really, really. Yeah, you thought about that. Yeah. <laughs> well, certainly we, we, we want people to come to us, which is why we're very visible in the community. Whenever we are, we have our baseball caps and our shirts so people can see who we are. So certainly the support and spreading the word that we are here to help in the community will certainly be a, a big help. Uh, and what about I, the things that you're doing to, you know, feeding the homeless? Yes. And providing water and, and things to events and things like that. Can people help out in areas like that and donate? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. We, we would love to take donations. Uh, we would even accept financial donations, but because we're not a 501 3C program, we would, you know, we can't provide the tax write off. But, you know, if you just want to donate, certainly we'll take those donations and we'll share them with the community. Uh, now, how do people uh, get in contact with you guys? <laughs> so, so look here, uh, Ronnie. I've told you guys, and they, they get it now. I said, stop referring people to me. Y'all know the story just as well as I do. So, y'all need to tell them about what we do. And so, every now and then, I still have people come to me. But if I'm in front of them, I was like, ah, you tell them. You know what we do. So, you share the story. <laughs> we we want to tell them what we do, but we also tell them who. <laughs> and there again, Sam, and I keep going between Pope and Anthony because I'm thinking, you know it, and this is what I was saying earlier, your government name, your nickname. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, it's for me, I got to recall them talking about Anthony. But no, these two guys, they are great, and they're uh, once again shying away, but anybody who has a project or uh, uh, can help us in any way, help others with their project, they always volunteer their time. Mm -hmm. And then delegate and then all the guys we all would step up because now we're looking at kind of branching out and saying well let's do it in different areas you know like a community service and education portion and so everybody there again nobody shies away and then we don't have a situation where we have all chiefs you know yeah. nobody in, and these guys are forever saying now uh, let us remind you <laughs> and the rest of us are here. Okay, right. <laughs> but no, we all just kind of work together. You're not just a team, you're a family. That's what's yeah. going on. And that's the unique thing about it, Ronnie. We all grew up together mm -hmm. from elementary through high school all the way to college. And when they started segregation in Raleigh in 1972, mm -hmm. we all different junior high schools. But one thing that we did through a, one of our, our organizations called The Best. There was only three high schools in Raleigh at the time, Broaden, Sanderson, and Inlow. So that was a group of people out of those schools that came together. So now we have the best re class reunion, which includes anybody who went to those three schools. It's called Broaden, oh, wow. Sanderson, and Inlow together. That's what the acronym BEST stands for. And that's been in existence about 25 years now. And we have a class reunion every year for anyone, uh, any class that went to those schools. And so of course now, the school system is a lot bigger. We have over 200 schools in, in the Wake, Raleigh Wake wow. County school system. So now, um, are there other communities in Raleigh that is looking to emulate what you guys are doing? Well, now, it's interesting because we have a member that is a part of another organization who's joined us. And I'm gonna let Pope share with you how he, met Pope at a meeting and how it has grown from that point. Yeah, uh, so I think with us being recognized, a lot of doors have opened for us and so we've been involved in other things. I've just recently joined the board of directors for the African American Cultural Festival, which is a major uh, African American festival in downtown Raleigh every September. So I've just joined that board. We're looking out to branch it to some other avenues through the Parks and Recreation. I know that they have uh, people that are selected to the board for two years. Mm -hmm. yeah. So hopefully we're going to get somebody on that board as well. Mm -hmm. So by us being recognized in the city, we're able to now get folks on other boards. Sam is very active in the community because he, he uses his vehicles as a tool to promote, you know, not only his vehicles, but also to promote what we do. So we're all connected 
to a lot of different agencies and, agencies and a lot of different people. So now um, one, we're going to be closing, but okay. I do have a question for you guys. Um, you mentioned that you're reti you had retired yes. from your government jobs. Absolutely. So now, do you think of yourself as retired now with all that you're doing? Are you still, you know, looking at yourself as retired or are you just like, you know, I'm not retired. I am still living a very full life, but you're doing something different, which means that um, you're doing what you want and what you love. Right. So do you consider yourself still retired? I do. Speaking on my behalf, Sam, I am. I think I am still retired, but I'm not getting paid. I'm volunteering. So I'm still getting paid from the government job, but I'm volunteering my time as well. So that's a good thing about it. You know, I can stop and start when I want to. With the mm -hmm. government job, you got to be there five days a week, 40 exactly. hours a week. Yeah. <laughs> so, no. As Sam being humble once again, <laughs> now we were talking earlier, at least three days or four days a week, he's at the uh, his grandson's elementary school and mm -hmm. he devotes three and a half, four hours each mm -hmm. time he's there. Wow. And <laughs> hope he's involved with the different programs throughout the city, we know what have you. So, um, yeah, he's not getting uh, monetarily compensated, mm -hmm. but uh, just spiritually. You know, it's uplifting. So he's not sitting at home. Nobody is watching the uh, paint or grass grow. <laughs> I think I think the thing for us, um, Ronnie, is that the fact that we are doing what we want to do. We're mm -hmm. not on the schedule. We select and choose the things that we want to do. And serving our community, I think, is really important because you know we we have too many people who just exist in the community, mm -hmm. and so we're here trying to make a difference in our community. And we want to be um, visible for people to see us. And so our, our long-term goal is to bring our sons and nephews and cousins and uncles to get them to be part of this organization. So as we get older and we phase out of the organization, that we can continue on. And so we, we, we're coming up with a succession plan to make sure that we continue years down the road when we're, we're not able to get out and maybe do as much. But there again, we all young, so we're going to keep it moving. There you go. That's, right. <laughs> That's a great idea. So now, um, uh, Anthony, and yes. it just, you know, Ben was saying something that hit me that you're one of the Tonys, right? Yes, I, well, no, because I make sure they call me Anthony. My name is not Tony. Oh, you call me something. We have several Tonys, we have several Michaels, and then uh, in addition to all that, uh, we have other guys, you know, that have names from outside of our organization that cut, they have now come to be a part of the organization. So we have Tony's, John's, you just name them. We got a whole bunch of them. We just, we, I know them all. Sam yeah. is, I'm not saying my bed is still learning all that because we we use the nicknames. So we have, look, I'm going to give you some examples of some of the nicknames. We have a Bobo. We have a money boy. We have Doc Warren. <laughs> what? <laughs> we, yeah, we got a Tug Bone. Uh, these are all named childhood names that some of these guys we still call them by because that's that's we knew them growing up, and so it's a lot of fun in our meetings too. We don't sit there; we do business, but at the end we allow time for everybody to just talk and and you know interact and just have a good time. That's awesome. So that's now, good. how do they contact you, Anthony? <laughs> <laughs> so right now, um, Ronnie, I have a Facebook page, and so a lot of the things that we do is done through our Facebook page. And it's Anthony Pope. So okay. they can go on Facebook, put in my name, and they're going to come up with Because everything we do, I post to that, that medium because that's what we started out using. We're okay. in the process of getting our website up and started. And it's going to be the men of Southeast Raleigh. So okay. they just go and they pull that name up. It's going to bring up everything. We should be up and running with that by the end, by the 1st of June. And because right now we have, have people working on the web page to get it up and running. So we I'm sure it's going to be a busy website, too. Yes, yes. So <laughs> in, in addition to my Facebook page, that's connected also to uh, Instagram and other avenues. So if you pull it up through Facebook, it's all going to be connected. And what we're working towards is getting the website connected with all of those social media sites where we post stuff. Okay. That sounds and, awesome. 
Yeah, they can also reach out to me. They can call me, you know, I, I'll I'll provide my number so you can post it on your website and they okay. can reach out to Sam and they can also reach out to Ben. Yeah. <laughs> so you want to provide your number now? Yes, my number is area code 919-412-2245. That's in Raleigh, North Carolina. So, you know, like I said, I was going to end like a few minutes ago, but that was some important stuff. So, um, but I am going to let you guys go. I know it's Sunday and I do appreciate you, you know, joining the conversation. But before we go, this, this conversation has been inspiring and motivating. You guys are doing some fantastic things. So now if you, I want each of you, if you were looking, you know, thinking about the community, you had the opportunity to talk to people face to face that somebody approached you. What is uh, a message that you would give a person that would inspire them to move forward and do more things in their community? So Sam, I'm gonna start with you. What would you have to say to somebody to inspire them? Well, what I would do or say to them is think again. Think about where you came from and the times, the hard times that your family had to really think about it. Mm -hmm. And what can you do to make this work in your community? So think again. Like and that's, that. also, that's also our mantra, uh, Ronnie. And Sam actually came with that mantra. And so we appreciate it because it was perfect for what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Anthony? Yeah, you, I think what I would tell folks, Ronnie, is to really get involved in your community. Because if you don't step in and do things in your community, then you, you're not taking an uh, active part in what you were history uh, growing up in that era. Mm -hmm. So it's important that we give back to our community. We can't do everything, but everybody can do something. Right. And if everybody did just a little bit, you know, you don't have to be a, a big organization, but just give up your time and your talents to help somebody else, whether it's mm -hmm. an individual, a church, an organization, do something to help somebody else because we've been blessed and we need to share those blessings. Exactly. Very nice. Ben? I would say do not lose our history. Start at home. Growing in the community, going out into the community, providing services is great, but start at home because a lot of times, even our siblings, our grandkids, and we do not know what the family has been provided and just how valuable the smallest things have been when the village effect. Right. I try to revisit that village effect, but start at home. That's nice. I love that. So, gentlemen, I, I once again I say thank you so much for you know joining me and being part of this conversation. Kudos to each one of you for what you're doing and your whole team. Um, it, to me, it was like overwhelming when I first started talking to Anthony. I was trying to you know bring everything together and compartmentalize it and stuff. And it can't be done because you guys are, are so far reaching and accomplishing so many things. So again, congratulations. And mm -hmm. you know, keep in touch with me because I want to know more about what's happening. And uh, you know, my prayer for you guys is that people from other communities, other states it will reach out to you and say, how do we get started so that we can you know, build more community strong because you sound like you have a very strong community. So thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Be, I would like to, I would be remiss if I didn't recognize Cherie Sutton, who is uh, over the, the She Is Me project. Cherie, I met on a cruise. And so okay. well, actually it was a trip. We were in Dubai and Cairo, Egypt, and I met her there. And uh -huh. so she said, hey, I have this friend. So I want to send a shout out to her to thank her for recommending us to you. And uh, Cherie is doing some great things with her organization. She sure is. And so we really appreciate her, uh, you know, at least connecting us with you so that we could share our story as well. And we're yeah. so, so grateful for you taking the time out of your schedule so. all the way Thank on you. the East Coast to recognize us. And we appreciate you, you. And we pray that, you know, things will continue to go well with your radio station. You've been in, in existence for 25 plus years. Who, me? Yes. Yeah, over 30 years in the industry. 
Yeah. Oh, okay. And so, um, but you know, having my own radio station, it's like you guys say, I can do things as I want and to make sure, you know, that there's nobody redirecting me and telling me I can't talk to a particular organization. Uh -huh. You know, sometimes people just look at who's doing real, you know, big things that's out there in front. And they don't look at the people who are doing things, humble people like you guys, mm -hmm. where you're doing things and you're just accomplishing things, but you're not looking for recognition for what you do. And so uh, those are the types of people that I look for to be able to recognize and to shine the spotlight on because you're doing fantastic things. And I think it's very important. So thank you. Thank you, Ronnie. We certainly appreciate it. Take care. Be blessed. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm uh -huh. Ronnie Sanders, and you know, I I had such a great conversation going with these guys that I forgot to tell you who we who you were talking to throughout the um, conversation. But I am Ronnie Sanders. Just had a great conversation, and I'm just gonna say your first names because I feel like I know you now. And I just had a great conversation with Sam and Anthony and Ben in uh, North Carolina, in Raleigh, North Carolina, the men of Southeast North Carolina. Oh, oh I'm wrong. sorry. Men of Southeast Raleigh doing fantastic things. So you guys can continue to follow uh, Power Music Radio. We're at www.powermusicradio, and music is spelled with a Z, N-U-Z-I-C, radio.com. And on Facebook, we're The PMR Crew, and crew is spelled with a K. So two unique spellings for a very unique radio station. So we will see you guys soon. And uh, guys, thank you again so much. It was a pleasure having this conversation. You have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.